Hey, are you in charge of managing large and complex projects for your family or your business? Do you dream of keeping them perfectly organized but find that they're getting derailed time and time again? Maybe you've dabbled in using AI for this but failed to get repeatable, consistent results? If that's the case, then I think you're gonna like this video. Today I wanna show you how to use Gemini's CLI to build custom AI tools that can manage any project. These tools are gonna allow you to adapt to extreme project shifts, to maximize limited resources, and to easily communicate with everybody involved. What I'm about to show you has allowed me to take on much more ambitious projects with smaller teams than I ever could in the past. In turn, this has helped me generate more revenue and profit than I could before I was able to build these custom AI tools. I'm really excited to share all this with you today. Here are the four major areas of effective project management. First, the initiation and planning phase, setting clear objectives and SMART goals. Then detailed planning, building work breakdown, structure documents, and Gantt charts. We're gonna be talking a lot about Gantt charts charts and how you can plug the outputs of the AI directly into the project management tools that you're already using. Then getting into execution and control, managing your time, budget, and other resources. Quality control is a part of this section as well. That includes testing and reviews. This also includes monitoring and KPIs. And most importantly, adaptability, adjusting to major changes. And finally, getting into closing out a project and looking back on it to see what we've learned, what we can improve upon the next time. And throughout the project life cycle, there are a few things we need to put a lot of focus on. One of the most important is stakeholder engagement. So communicating effectively with the stakeholders about what's going on and how the project's changing. Another area we need to put a lot of focus on is risk management. So what might be going wrong and how we might be able to adjust for that. So this is VS Code and this is what came before Cursor and Windsurf. Both of those tools were built off of this particular tool. This was way before AI was what coders were using to create software. We're basically just going to use this as a way to access the Gemini CLI. Since we're using Gemini CLI, the command line interface, we don't necessarily need Windsurf or Cursor because we're not using their AI uh, capabilities. We're just using um, Gemini inside of this as basically our uh, user interface. I'll show you how to set all this up at the end of the video, but for now, let's just dive in and let me show you how I would manage a project using Using this tool. Over here, I'm going to open a folder. I have a project here. I'm making, I'm helping a friend with some automations. And I simply opened this folder that is on the desktop. You see this co-pilot window is open here. We can close that out. We can go up to the terminal window and create a new terminal right down here. This is exactly the same as the terminal that you might be familiar with right here, but it's inside of this um, IDE is what it's called of VS Code. And I'm just gonna type in Gemini to get Gemini fired up. And again, I'll show you how to get that all set up uh, at the end of the video. Now we see our beautiful Gemini here. And I've loaded in here a transcript of our call. So this is the initial call I had with some friends that I'm helping with these automations. And one cool trick I wanna show you that I still think is undervalued uh, inside of Zoom, I have my settings here. If you scroll down to settings, go to uh, recordings and cloud recording, and this will uh, make sure that we're recording all of our calls. These are the settings that I like, and most importantly, you do need a paid account to create this audio transcript, but I find this to be much more valuable than a lot of those different AI summarizers and things like that, is just getting the, the raw transcript of your calls. This is helpful because you know here is that call and it has these, uh, the speakers are clearly labeled and that is very, very helpful as you wanna go and trace back you know who said what, when, down the road, having that clear, raw, unsummarized um, data is, is super helpful. So here's where we're gonna be interacting with Gemini down here. Here's all of our uh, files that we're gonna be creating and filling this up with prompts and different uh, parts of these AI tools that we're gonna be building out. And then we're gonna be looking at the files right up here. And this is also a great kind of a 
stepping stone if you've often wondered about how to get started with coding. Just getting familiar with this and starting to use this as your project management uh, portal, I think is going to give you superpowers above and beyond anything that's available in any other software tool. So down here in the terminal is where we're going to be interacting with Gemini. And for the most part, we're going to be interacting with it the same way that you're used to inside of the web portal of uh, working with any of these LLMs. Go ahead and make sure that you have Gemini 2.5 Pro selected here. Um, and there is one little trick. Um, there's these slash commands that are pretty helpful. If you click that slash, see if I can zoom in a little bit. If you click that slash, you can see all these different fancy um, commands that you can give it. And these are really powerful. You can even create your own slash commands once you get a feel for this, for repetitive things that you're doing over and over. Uh, but the one that we're going to use to start is this init. This is the initialize here where you can read and it just says this will analyze the project and create a tailored Gemini.md file. This is a little um, file that is just for Gemini so it understands all of what's going on inside of this um, group of files inside of this folder. Right now, there's just this one transcript. So we're going to be updating this uh, Gemini MD file as we go along. But let's just start. I think it's a great practice to start with this init. And you can see here, it just started to create a file. And this is one of the greatest things about doing it this way is you can see, act, you can access all of your files. You can get it to create files and update files. And you can see those files right up here. This is so cool. You can see right here, it says I've initialized that initial call transcript. And based on that conversation, this will be a no code project. It's, you know, now it understands that initial call. And this was just a laid back initial call where we discussed what we were gonna do. And that's gonna be all we need to get started with our project here. It's asking, hey, can Gemini write this file? We're just gonna click always allow. And now we have a Gemini has summarized this call based on the call transcript. And now I'm jumping into the cheat sheet. I make a cheat sheet like this for every single video that I create. These are all instantly accessible to anybody who joins my Patreon. There's a link in the description if that's interesting to you. There are a lot of ways to use LLMs to create clear objectives and smart goals, but this is my favorite. This is the pre-mortem prompt. So this basically just says using the files in this folder can a pre-mortem imagining that the project has failed and we're going to be analyzing potential causes. Help me identify common failure points based on similar projects and predict potential risks based on current data. Create a new file to contain this information. So copying this right into Gemini inside of VS Code and there we go. It's created this pre-mortem document that talks about all of the different things that uh, could cause this to go sideways. Lack of client Client engagement, always a key one. Overly complex solutions, these are great. These are exactly the things that I want to watch out for. And now we have a file that has those all there. So you can see already how this is much more powerful than just having this in the chat string somewhere. We're creating these different pieces that we're going to be using later, sharing with the client. Like I said, our client engagement, uh, stakeholder engagement is key. Uh, but it's just so nice to have these right here. We can refer back to them. We can edit them. And... You know, it's just a great way to work. Now moving from our clear objectives and risk assessments into detailed planning and creation of our work breakdown structure. This is a great prompt that starts to break this down into the tasks and subtasks. And it has access to all this stuff so you don't need to keep putting in the context. And that way, we're starting to do what is now called context engineering. So taking a strategic approach to the way that we feed these LLMs and make sure that they get everything that they need to help us. Really, the problem is no longer the power of these large language models. The problem and the bottleneck that a lot of people are facing is these ways of managing the context that they give to these large language models. And with that alone, it has now created the whole strategy here. 
This is above and beyond what I was expecting, frankly. It has gone through all of this. It's given us a payment gateway analysis. It's given us a training and handoff plan for when we finally send this. Uh, of course, it's given us this work breakdown structure, but it's given us even more. The website content, email strategy. Um, these are all of the things that we need to create this project. So it's now filling out all of the different um, components that we need. And what's beautiful about this is we can then, you know, as our skills develop, start be building code for each of these different pieces. Right now, this is a no code solution, but you can see how it can be really advantageous to build stuff here because it just naturally can start to morph into the simple code tools that could they become advanced code tools, which then you can scale in many different directions. All right, so you can see Gemini has rocked that and we're still, we still got 94% of its context window left. I love seeing this down here. This tells you how full its brain is. So we haven't even filled up its brain 10% yet. Once that starts to get closer to 100 is when you start to need to really tell it exactly where to start looking for information or when you need to get more strategic about how you're managing this context, how you're performing this context engineering. And now we're getting into some exciting stuff, the Gantt chart creation. So I'm gonna follow this up just saying, hey, using this WBS uh, that you've created, create a Gantt chart visualizing the project time Timeline, task durations, dependencies, and milestones, and please format this to match the example file. And we're gonna copy and paste this in right in here, and I'm gonna add this example Gantt chart file here to the right. I'm gonna right click it and copy the path just so it knows exactly where it is. I don't know if that is necessary, but it can't hurt. This is where you definitely wanna be using Gemini Pro. And now we're going to this onlinegant.com. This is a free tool that you can use to create these Gantt charts. And there are a few different ways you can ask Gemini to generate it as this Gantt file or as a CSV file. Uh, sometimes I've had better luck with the CSV. Sometimes it can knock it out and just do the Gantt file perfectly. Sometimes you need to just nudge it one more time to make sure that the formatting matches, but it shouldn't take more than one or two prompts to get something that works. Let's see what we got here. We've got our Gantt. Boom, there you go. So it's taken that WBS and it has created this Gantt chart with all these different phase one, phase two, including dependencies and so much more here. Look at how cool that is. Here are the dependencies. Here are the things that can be going in tandem. And this pulls us all the way through to project completion. And while initially it looks like kind of this is longer than I would expect it to take, I'd be willing to bet that this is fairly accurate. OnlineGantt.com, very cool resource. Check that out. I'm not sponsored by them or any of the software that I'm talking about today. This channel is fully supported by our Patreon. So if you're getting something out of these videos, definitely check out the Patreon. Like I said, there's a ton of resources in there. Now we need to share all this hard work and everything we've created with our client to let them know what our plan of attack is. So to create a project portal, you can just use this prompt, create an HTML client facing project portal to share our plan with the necessary stakeholders. Holders. I'm going to use a slightly modified one that points to an example project portal file. I have a, f a format that I like to follow. So I'm going to copy and paste that in right in here. And you can see I have that example portal file right there with um, the formatting just how I like it. And in fact, that worked so well the last time, I'm going to copy the path just so it knows exactly where it is. These are getting much better where you don't necessarily have to do that, but uh, again, it can't hurt. There it is, our project portal HTML. So here's another really cool free tool that I love, Static Run. You can just quickly and for free host these project portals. I'm gonna log in here. I'm gonna add a new project, upload a folder. So for whatever reason, you need to put that HTML file just in a folder, then you can upload it. And here it is, it has our project summary key milestones, deliverables, things that have been created so far, team, <laughs> 
risks, all sorts of cool stuff. You can um, then you know change this as you move through the project. You can get even fancier because what you're using right now, like I said, is code. So you can start to build out subfolders in there that turn into true microsites and even potentially allow your clients to log in and communicate with you. One tool that pairs very nicely with this is GitHub. So you can begin to push your uh, folders and everything that you've created, all of this project management information to GitHub. That can be a great way to just store it all in the cloud. If there's somebody you're collaborating with who wants to access the information there, they can then download it from GitHub and get um, exactly all of this stuff and start working with Jim and I on their end. Uh, now you're getting directly into how developers manage their projects. And if you wanted to create a fancier project portal, you could use Vercel to deploy that. That would definitely be a big step up from this static.run. But you can get a lot done with this free tool and it's probably a great place to start. Just wanna mention these others as your skills begin to grow and mature. So as you know, no project goes exactly according to plan. In fact, uh, many times it's far from that. So adaptability, like I said at the beginning, is key. So I just had a second call with this client and I am going to pull in the transcript from that call right in here. I'm simply gonna tell Gemini, hey, we just had this call and there's a lot of things I didn't know about. Please take a look at this transcript and update everything accordingly. It's reading that transcript now, updating all of the project documentation. How nice is that? It's definitely getting into the nuance of that call transcript, which is great. There it is, updating the project portal which is really cool another great prompt for this is here so you can just say to Gemini hey the following issue has come up please help me brainstorm as many diverse approaches to this problem as possible and this will then give you a bunch of options you can select whichever option you want to be the best and then you want to update what might be needed to the WBS update the Gantt chart and generate a summary of changes. So this has generated a nice email that I can just copy and paste right into my Gmail and send off to the client, letting her know all about what we had discussed and how that impacts the project. This cheat sheet is absolutely packed with everything that we went over and tons more resources that we didn't even get into. There's a ton in this resource efficiency analysis. So looking for ways to save time and save money, different ways to prioritize tasks and optimize them so you can do more with less. There's some great stuff in here for analyzing project outcomes and comparing them to the initial project goals and objectives. This thing is 20 pages long. And in addition to this, I'm gonna include a separate zip file. Let me show you how this works. Once you download and unzip the zip file, you can open a new window for Visual Studio Code. And when you open this project management template, it's going to have all of the stuff we went over, that Gantt chart example. It's going to have the project portal example in there. And then it's going to have these different discovery workflows that you can work through context planning workflow and execution workflows here that guide you through basically everything that's in the cheat sheet and a whole lot more to make sure that you're uh, engineering this context to the best of your ability. Now I'm gonna show you how to get this all set up. There's just a couple steps you gotta do downloading these free tools and connecting Gemini to your Google account. To get started using Gemini CLI, you're gonna wanna install VS Code. You don't necessarily need Cursor or Windsurf. You don't need to pay for those fancy tools to use this. You can just use the free version of VS Code. Of course, if you wanna use those other tools for their added features, be my guest. I've gotten a lot of value out of Windsurf, but VS Code is a free IDE, a free coding tool that you can use to just get started with Gemini CLI. So you just go to visualstudiocode.com or you can do a Google search for that. I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna download it here. And once you unzip it, it should look exactly like this. You're also gonna need Node.js. If you don't have that already, you can go to nodejs.org. Click this download button and download the appropriate version right here. And now I'm gonna go up to the terminal menu, select new terminal. Now I'm just copying this command here, npm install dash g at google slash Gemini CLI. You can take a screenshot of that. Of course, that's gonna be in the cheat sheet. I'm also gonna close this chat window because we're not gonna use Copilot right now. We're gonna be using Gemini instead. So now we have a nice clean workspace. These are gonna be where all of our folders are stored, where we can do our expert context engineering 
engineering. This is where how we're going to be able to view the folders, and this is where we're going to be able to chat with Gemini, and we're going to fire up Gemini by simply typing in Gemini. Now we either have to log in with Google or give it a Gemini API key. I'm simply going to log in with Google. The easy way here. Now I've got it authorized and connected to my Google account. I want to go to the marketplace here and search for Gemini CLI. This is the Gemini CLI companion. We're going to install that. Looks like that's been successfully installed. Boom. There you go. All right. I hope you got a ton out of this. Hit me up in the comments if you have questions. The next step I want you to check out is this video on strategy. This will really take your projects to the next level. I will see you over there. Make your dreams come true.